In the intricate tapestry of business, success often hinges on adaptability. The companies that stand tall today might have stumbled, faltered, or even begun in entirely different industries than where they are now. As we embark on this journey, we'll uncover the intriguing tales behind iconic brands, revealing that sometimes the path to greatness takes unexpected twists and turns. From playing cards to digital games, from books to beauty projects, the origins of some household names might just surprise you. So let's dive into these transformative stories and see how flexibility, resilience, and a dash of serendipity can change the course of business history. 1837, New York City. A young Charles Louis Tiffany and John B. Young opened a modest stationery and fine goods emporium on Broadway. With a $1,000 advance from Tiffany's father, they began to cater to the city's elite, selling a variety of stationery items and a selection of gifts. However, it was Tiffany's visionary approach to silverware that truly set the stage for the brand's evolution. By 1853, Charles Tiffany had taken control and began emphasizing jewelry, especially diamonds. The brand's repute grew, particularly after acquiring some of the French crown jewels which established it as a go-to for luxury jewels. But perhaps what truly entrenched Tiffany & Co. in the cultural lexicon was its iconic blue box. Synonymous with luxury and timeless elegance, this robin's egg blue packaging became as coveted as the treasures it held inside. In a digital age dominated by instant communication, Slack stands as a ubiquitous tool for businesses worldwide. But its origins lie not in corporate strategy or tech incubators, but rather in the vibrant world of online gaming. Stuart Butterfield, Slack's co-founder, initially embarked on a journey to create a massive multiplayer online game titled Glitch. Although the game eventually folded due to various challenges, it inadvertently sowed the seeds for Slack's inception. Within the development process for Glitch, the team used an internal communication tool tailored to their specific needs. They soon realized that this tool held potential far beyond game development. The strengths of the platform, particularly in fostering team collaboration and communication, were undeniable. Recognizing this potential, Butterfield and his team transformed their gaming tool into a fully-fledged business communication platform. Slack was born, going from a gaming byproduct to an indispensable tool for teams globally. Sometimes, the journey to success involves a few unexpected detours. Step back to the 1930s, a time when coal was a common heating source in homes, leaving sooty deposits on walls. To address this, the Kutal Products Company developed a non-toxic, pliable wallpaper cleaner. This dough-like substance was adept at removing the coal residue from wallpapers. However, by the mid-20th century, as coal became less popular and vinyl wallpapers began to emerge, the demand for this wallpaper cleaner dwindled. Facing potential decline, the company was on the lookout for new avenues to sustain their product. Enter Kay Zufall, a nursery school teacher and family member to one of Kutol's employees. She discovered that children loved molding the crafting and the cleaner more than the traditional modeling clay. Sensing an opportunity, she suggested repurposing the product as a toy. The dough was rebranded, given vibrant colors and Play-Doh was introduced to the world. Imagine a world where video games are a figment of the future, a distant idea yet to be born. Now transport yourself back to Kyoto in 1889. Here, in the cultural heart of Japan, Fusihiro Yamauchi embarked on a venture, not in the realm of electronic entertainment, but in the craft of handmade playing cards. Named Nintendo Kopai, this small business specialized in a card game known as Hanafuda, blending artistic tradition with recreational enjoyment. For decades, Nintendo's focus remained on these card games, and they even dabbled in ventures as varied as taxis, love hotels, and instant rice. It wasn't until the late 20th century that the company took its pioneering leap into the world of video games. Now fast forward to today, and names like Mario, Zelda, and Pikachu are synonymous with childhoods around the globe. It's a powerful reminder that businesses can evolve in ways that are beyond the wildest imaginations of their founders. In the early 20th century, the Hassenfield brothers, Henry and Halal, ventured into business with a modest enterprise in Rhode Island. Rather than toys or games, they began by selling textile remnants. As the business evolved, the Hassenfields found success in producing school supplies like pencil boxes and other stationary items. The shift towards toys began in the 1940s when the company expanding its offerings to include doctor and nurse kits for children. Sensing a profitable market in playthings, the Hassenfield brothers leaned into toy manufacturing with fervor. It was a simple gamble that paid off when they launched their iconic Mr. Potato Head toy in 1952. This quirky, customizable toy not only became a sensational hit, but also marked the beginning of Hasbro's dominance in the toy industry. 
From a modest textile enterprise to the global behemoth behind beloved franchises like Transformers, G.I. Joe, and My Little Pony, Hasbro's transformation is a remarkable tale of adaptability and keen market insight. On the busy streets of 19th century New York, one David H. McConnell wasn't selling dreams of beauty. He was a door-to-door -door bookseller. Yet, as a keen businessman, McConnell had a trick up his sleeve to enhance his book sales. With every book purchase, he'd gift a sample of homemade perfume, a small token to charm his female clientele. Soon, a trend emerged. Women began anticipating McConnell's visits, not for the literary delights, but for the fragrant allure of his perfumes. Recognizing the golden opportunity at hand, McConnell made a pivotal decision in 1886. He transitioned from books to beauty, laying the foundation for what would become a beauty empire, Avon. The name was inspired by Shakespeare's Stratford-upon-Avon, aligning the brand with elegance and legacy. Today, Avon isn't just about cosmetics, it's a global phenomenon that empowers women through entrepreneurship. That's what their literature says, at least. Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing, a name that doesn't immediately conjure images of vibrant multicolored sticky notes. Founded in 1902, 3M's original venture was to mine corundum, a mineral ideal for making grinding wheels. However, the mine's deposits turned out to be a low-grade anorthosite, rendering their initial aspirations unattainable. But instead of accepting defeat, the company's spirit of innovation and perseverance came to the forefront. Over time, they expanded into abrasives, adhesive tapes, and during the 1980s, the serendipitous invention of the post-it notes. It was a solution without a problem at first. Dr. Spencer Silver, a scientist at 3M, had developed an adhesive that was strong enough to stick to objects but could be repositioned multiple times. It wasn't until another 3M scientist, Art Fry, thought of using the adhesive to anchor his bookmark in his hymn book that the real potential was seen. Together, these twists and turns in 3M's journey underpin an essential truth. Sometimes the most groundbreaking products arise from mistakes, failures, or simple curiosities. Post-World War II Italy was a nation in recovery, and for Ferruccio Lamborghini that meant an opportunity in agriculture. By converting military vehicles into tractors, Lamborghini's initial foray into business was born, manufacturing tractors from surplus wartime materials. His tractors, renowned for their quality, soon became indispensable to the post-war agricultural renaissance in Italy. As his success grew, so did his passions. A car enthusiast, Ferruccio owned various luxury automobiles, including Ferraris. However, after experiencing recurrent clutch problems with his Ferraris, he approached Enzo Ferrari himself to suggest improvements. The story goes that Enzo's response was a dismissive, let me make cars, you stick to making tractors. Lamborghini's focus shifted. Fueled by a desire to outdo Ferrari, he decided to create a luxury car that would be a superior alternative to the models Ferrari produced. In the ebb and flow of time, market shifts, consumer preferences evolved, and the unpredictable happens. The stories we've journeyed through, from Nintendo's card beginnings to Lamborghini's tractor roots, underline a universal truth in business, the power of adaptability. These brands didn't just survive their respective errors, they thrived, pivoted, and redefined themselves in the face of change. It's a testament to the fact that success isn't necessarily about having the right idea from the start. Often, it's about recognizing when the winds of change are blowing and adjusting your sails accordingly. So whether you're a budding entrepreneur or an established brand, remember that the path to lasting success is a straight line. It's carved with twists, turns, and reinventions. Embrace change, cherish adaptability, and let evolution be your guiding star.